Well, it's a pleasure to be with you at this time as we continue in John's Gospel. We're looking today at John chapter 14, and the title I've used from a very important verse in this uh, chapter, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So first, uh, let not your hearts be troubled, a very good word for us in every day and every time, but certainly for us now. Believe in God, Jesus says, believe also in me. So believe there is the idea of trust. Put your trust in God, put your trust in me. Um, there are questions that seem to be answered by what Jesus is saying as he's headed toward the cross. And we have to look at everything in 14 and 15, 16 and 17 as Jesus is heading towards the cross here. And uh, the first question is uh, that he seems to be anticipating that of the disciples, will, will we be left alone? Uh, we, will we be left uh, behind? Will we be abandoned? And he says, in my father's house are many dwelling places. Uh, he said, I will not uh, leave you as orphans and I will come to you. Uh, that's in verse 18, a little later, I, I will come again and I will take you to myself. So we will not be left alone. He'll be with us. And uh, then another question might be, will we see God? And the answer is, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Um, and that's so important for us. We're going to see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, are engaged in our lives eternally. And uh, we will not be alone. Uh, then another question, will we have a purpose in our existence in the future and even now. And, and he says, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, he says, greater works will you do. Um, and he connects this to a life of prayer, which is what we're called to, but prayer leading forward to action, that whatever you ask in my name, this will, this I will do. So there's a life that we have in Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit that will will be a purposeful and fruitful life. Now, from verse 15 on through the end, we have an examination of what that life will look like. And it's connected with this word love. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So that's one aspect of love is that we will keep the commandments of the Lord. And then also another connection to, to love is, is that it's spiritual and there will be the person of the Holy Spirit connected to this love. And, and so Jesus says, and um, I'm going to send another helper, the spirit of truth. And with the presence of the spirit of truth, then we have this presence of Jesus, as he has said, and we mentioned earlier, that I will not leave you as orphans. No, I will come to you. So here we have the commandments of God. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is really Christ with us. And uh, he says then... Uh, he describes what this, this life is like of love uh, in response to a question of the disciples, how is it uh, that you'll manifest yourself to us and not to the world? How will we have this life of love? And yet the world will somehow be different from it. And so here we go. He says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with, with him. So this is the life that he has for us. It's a life of love, of commandment keeping, of the presence of the Holy Spirit in the elect of the father, in those who are the disciples of Jesus. And the end result of that personally is going to be peace. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give with you. So this, I think, is the point here. And, and as we try and apply that, we have to realize first that
that we need to believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to put our trust in God. We can't have peace in a uh, challenging and unbelieving world without ourselves committing to belief, to trust in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then to realize this, that uh, there, this is not a new idea, that in Isaiah uh, chapter 48, 22, chapter 57, 21, we have this little phrase, there is no peace for the wicked. So thinking that we can trust in God, but then ignore the responsibility of commandment keeping is a mistake. So we need to believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to recognize that there is no peace for the wicked. So let us now turn to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, our hearts are often unsettled. Lord, you know this. Where can we find peace? You have this gift for us in your presence with us. So grant us a fuller measure of your Holy Spirit. We yield ourselves now to the commandments of your Son, to the love that you demand of disciples. We know there is no peace for the wicked, so we place all our trust in you and we follow you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the way. This is the way, the truth and the life. It's a life of love. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to go forth and live that life of love today in a perilous world. May God be with you and remember the Lord reigns. He's in charge. God bless you.